Well, I'm just trying to uh, to keep up with it all, uh, for sure. I, I think it's quite striking um, the the way in which the Supreme Court has uh, has has responded to to the arrest on Tuesday. It's of course the second the second time over the last few weeks that the Supreme Court has um, gone against the government. You know, indeed, the Supreme Court is at odds with government and the state on the issue of when the election date should be for the, the two uh, provincial elections in KPK and Punjab. So this is a, a level of judicial activism that is certainly quite um, quite striking. But you know, uh, just the way things appear to be playing out, um, I, despite this, this ruling, um, despite the fact that Khan has been released on bail for, for a bit, and despite the fact that uh, he's theoretically cannot be arrested based on the criteria that you mentioned before. I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if there's another attempt to, to arrest him anyway. There's so many cases against him. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. But, you know, bottom line is sort of stepping back to look at how this, this crisis is playing out. I think, and this is very dangerous, there appear to be two, not one, but two major institutional crises, uh, pardon me, two institutional confrontations playing out. One, the ongoing one between the state um, and Khan and the opposition, and the other one being the courts, and especially the Supreme Court and the state, and especially the military. So that is very troubling when you have two parallel confrontations playing out at the same time against the backdrop of this very political, a very volatile political environment, um, and uh, obviously also the very severe economic crisis and everything else playing out. I think the best way to describe um, Washington's reaction at this point is concern and caution. Um, you know, there's certainly, for those in, in Washington and the government that follow Pakistan um, and that uh, focus on it on a policy level, just a lot of concern about what's playing out in the country right now. Uh, you know, the unrest, the, uh, the destabilization, you know, the political chaos that's played out. You know, this is very worrisome for, um, for, for U.S. officials and also for U.S. interests in the sense that um, you know, there's always been concern here about Pakistan being an inherently volatile state with its history, legacy of, of military rule and of, of extremism, terrorism, as well as the presence of nuclear weapons. You know, that, that very volatile combination, any type of trigger for political and social instability is going to be regarded with concern here in Washington. And that certainly is the case right now. But I say that there's also caution and what I mean by that is that the U.S. government has to be very careful about how it messages any concern uh, or even focus on the crisis in Pakistan. Um, you know, the, the U.S. government was dragged into Pakistan's political uh, turmoil when Imran Khan accused the Biden administration of being complicit in his ouster. And for that reason, I think that the U.S. Has, has had to be very careful, and it has not. It has been very careful about any type of public messaging related to uh, the political crisis in in Pakistan. And so that's why you have not seen any type of formal statement, any type of formal message from any U.S. government branch, setting aside Capitol Hill, which I could get to in a second. But in terms of the executive branch, the White House, the State Department, nothing. The only time we've heard any type of comment, public comment from U.S. officials on the crisis over the last week has been when uh, the State Department spokesperson has been asked by uh, U.S.-based, Washington-based Pakistani journalists what they think about the situation. And then the comments in those cases have been very anodyne, very boilerplate. You know, we support any outcome that, um, that leads to the rule of law. We don't prefer any one political figure or candidate over the others, all of that. Um, now, it's been different on Capitol Hill. You know, there have been a number of um, very influential senior members of Congress that have issued statements strongly condemning what's going on, calling for the restoration of rights and democracy, including the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. That's a big deal. I think that's a reflection, perhaps, of, you know, how just how popular Khan is among the Pakistani American community here. Um, you know, the, and members of Congress will always pay attention to what their constituents are, are telling them. And also, uh, PTI has a very strong presence in the U.S., and they have been making efforts, they've been doing lobbying efforts to get members of Congress to pay attention to what's going on and see it from the lens that they want to see it uh, from. Uh, bottom line here is that I, I, I strongly suspect that, the, that Washington, the, there's several things that the U.S. definitely does not want to see. It would not want to see a coup. Um, it, would, it would be opposed to that, even though the U.S. has privileges relations with the military, 
in Pakistan for many years, I don't think that it would support a coup. And if, if there were, I, I don't want to overstate this, I don't think this is likely, if there were to be a military takeover, I think that could elicit um, some type of statement, an actual formal reaction from the United States. But for now, you know, the US, you know, the officials will stay certainly very concerned, but uh, they're not really going to say much. They're going to be very careful in, uh, in their messaging for, for reasons that I mentioned.